a 63 micron net is drawn through the water column, usually about 100 meters. Um, and then that's all condensed into an end piece. The AIS lab technicians in Helena keep a watchful eye on Montana's waters. This guy right here, right next to the ostracod, is a dinoflagellate. I'd say average 15 samples, um, 20 is a good day. That's around 4,000 samples of water processed per year. The tiny mussel larvae are relatively easy to identify on this microscope using cross-polarized light. Luckily, the calcium carbonate in their shell glows. Most things in the water column don't have much calcium in them. And on top of veligers, which is what the larval state of mussels is called, on top of them glowing, they glow in a very certain pattern called a Maltese cross. Um, and nothing else really shows that pattern. So it makes it a very easy way to find a needle in a haystack. But no needle or muscle has been identified in any Montana water body for quite some time. I've never seen one in a sample from Montana. And that's good news. After suspected mussel spawn were identified in the Canyon Ferry outside Helena and Tiber Reservoir outside Chinook in 2016. Well, fast forward to today, and it's been over five years clear of any more muscle evidence found in any Montana waterway. So despite the lack of evidence, Idaho finding uh, aquatic invasive species earlier in September shows that the species very much still poses a risk to the West. That's why it's so important to clean drain and dry those boats. Reporting from Canyon Ferry, Geneva Zoltek, MTN News.